Today we're going to cover how to make changes directly in the database. Now there are a lot of different changes that you can do in the database and a lot of updating, so it really depends on what you're wanting to modify. So we're going to go through a couple different scenarios with you. Let's say that you're inside of a project and you get an updated pricing list or you go over your labor production and you want to take all of the information in this current project and you want to be able to save that back to the database so that way the next project you create where you're using a very similar setup or the same products it's going to pull that information in for you. The easiest way to do that is in a project itself you can actually go right out to your pricing screen and if you have pricing, account codes, user codes, any of that type of information that you've made modifications to when you're on the pricing or labor screen, you can simply mark the item in the white checkbox on the left hand side of the screen and then you can click the drum with an arrow and that's going to be your send to database icon. Once you click that icon, you're going to be presented with this dialog box. Simply go through and choose the options for what you would like to update for these items on the pricing screen and once you select those options and click OK, it's going to allow you to save that information back. Now it may take a couple minutes, so let the program process and do all of the saving that it needs to. And then the next time that you pull this product in, it'll have all of that information saved to it and you won't have to go in and refill out everything that you had to this time. The same thing applies for the labor screen. Ultimately, you would click on your labor icon. And for your production rate, or again, user codes or user one through four codes, any of that information, the process is the same as what you saw on the pricing screen. You're going to mark your items that you want to make your changes and save to the database, and then you're going to click that drum with an arrow, the save to database icon. In this case, though, you're going to have some different options because you're looking at labor and you're not looking at pricing. Here you're going to go in and you'll be able to choose your production rate, again those user 1 through user 4 codes, and you'll also have the user code option. You'll notice that there is the description option there, but that's not commonly used in most cases. Select the options you want and then click OK. Once you do that, the program is going to then process and think and make sure that it's saving all the information correctly. And then after it's saved, you will now have an updated database for your pricing and your labor. Now, I know that typically you wouldn't think about saving information from a job. However, that's gonna be the easiest way to hit the products that you're using the most and get those products saved back to the database with the most current information. Now, let's talk about things like making modifications to conditions that are part of a master or a group. What about making changes to your recap screen and the markups that are presented every time? So if you want to make those changes, you don't have to be in a job. In this case, if I went to scenarios and I checked in my job, it's not going to affect anything that I'm going to do moving forward. Reason being is because we want to make those changes in the database directly. So to make those changes in the database directly, you're going to click on your database breadcrumb in the upper right corner. Once you left click on that, you're going to be presented with this window. Now you are going to have quite a few options. I keep mentioning user 1 through user 4 codes. Most of the time user 1 and user 2 are the most commonly used fields. User 1 is typically the account codes and user 2 is typically your face codes. So if you wanted to make any modifications or do any editing here, you would simply just double click on that field and now you can go in and make any modifications, edits, or add any of that information that you need to. If you want to go back to that main list, simply just click on estimating that breadcrumb and it'll take you right back to the main list. Now out here you can build and modify your add-on items. So if you're working with add-ons, you can double click on the add-ons option and scroll through here and make any modifications that you may need to make or build any add-ons that you may need to build. Continuing down, if you wanted to add any contacts in, you could open up the contacts option and go through and add in any contact that you needed. You can add in business owners or architects, you can add in project managers. So realistically, you have a lot of information that you can add in here and use and fill that out inside of your project if you would like to. Continuing down, costing codes, this is just how we're calculating all of the information on the recap screen. So we're allowing you to go in and add additional costing codes if you need them, 
In most cases, you're gonna be using what we've provided to you by default. This is really just allowing you to get more creative and more detailed and more granular in your breakout on the recap screen if needed. Continuing down, fire test, that's gonna be specific for the fireproofing industry. This is where you can go out there and manipulate, modify, and edit any fire test that you may need to. Continuing down to groups, now these are gonna be the masters that you've saved back to the database or the groups that you've saved back. In this case, you'll notice that we have quite a few out there because we're working in a test database. However, if you wanted to make any modifications to these, there's a couple different views that you're gonna be seeing. Ultimately, this is your main view. If you were to click on any one of these masters, you're then gonna be presented with the condition view that's inside of the master. If you were to then left click on any condition, you're gonna be presented with the items that are part of that condition. Now, in most cases, you're not gonna be making item changes out here. Most of the time, you're gonna be making condition property changes. So for example, let's say that you wanted to adjust the default starting height of your wall flashing. If that's the case, you're gonna click the edit button on your wall flashing condition, and now you can make any modification to the condition properties for this master specifically. Once you make your modifications and you click OK, so here we wanna change this from 36 to 48. Once we've made that change, we'll also go ahead and click OK. Now that we've clicked OK, you'll notice down here at the bottom that the program is letting you know that it's saving that condition. What does that mean? Well, that means that every job from this point forward that you go in and you pull that specific condition, it's now gonna have the updated information that you just added to it. So this is how you can go in and make database changes to the conditions that you need that are part of that master. Now, the downside is, is you can't add a condition directly into this list. You can copy and insert one that's similar and then go in and rebuild it if you would like. Or the other option you have is you can go through and you can create a project and pull the conditions in, build the new condition and resave the master back to the database. We do have a video on that. So if you would like, feel free to reference that video to walk you through how to create a group. Now, ultimately, this is how you can make condition property changes to the conditions that are part of your masters that you've saved back to the database. So continuing forward, what else do we have out here? Well, we have our items. So if you need to make some item changes and you know exactly what the changes are that you need to make, you're more than welcome to go right out here to the items, pull this open, search the item you need, and start making any modifications. Once you start making those modifications, the next job that you pull those conditions on where it's utilizing that item, you'll start to see that information. If you need to refresh a job, feel free to take a look at our refreshing video, and that'll walk you through how you can refresh a project with the current information in your database. Continuing down, now you have your labor types. So labor types are gonna to apply to all the different labor fields that you're gonna be using. In this case, if we open up our labor types, you'll notice that we have a, quite a few different labors and there's a cost per hour there. This is how you're gonna change that cost per hour for every project from this point moving forward. So in this case, let's say at the beginning of the year, you know that these rates are gonna be changing and you wanna get your database up to speed so that way every project from this point forward that you're estimating is gonna have the correct rate per hour. If that's the case, this is where you're gonna make those changes. Simply double click on that labor types option and here now you're just gonna manipulate any of these labor types that are being used. If you don't know which labor types you're using, that's okay, because you can find that out from the user code screen, and I'll show you that here in just a couple minutes. Continuing forward, you have locales. So locales, this is where you're gonna add or modify any locales that you're using inside of your project. If you're not familiar with locales, locales allow you to save different rates per hour as well as different markups. So if you're working in different counties or different states and you don't wanna change those numbers on every project, you do have the capability to set a locale up so that way you can have that information feed directly into your bid upon creation. If you need some assistance, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you out with setting up those locales. Continuing down, you have lookups. So this is just the database way to make modifications to any lookup that you have inside of your database. 
In this case, depending on the trade, you can click the category and you can go through and, and see what different trades you have. Now you may not have drywall and acoustic, eaves, flooring, painting, fireproofing or roofing in there, but whatever trade you do have, feel free to go ahead and click on that option. In this case, if I choose roofing and then I go choose my lookup type, it's gonna be asking me about specific items. In this case, if I scroll down, you'll notice that sheet metal comes up. You'll also notice that we're getting surface types in here. You're getting your roll types and plate types. And if we were to look at the drywall side of things, on the drywall side of things, you're going to get fastener type, you're going to get stud information, you're going to get track type. So realistically, we're looking at this information specific to the trade that you work in. Now, there are going to be specific lookups that apply to everyone. And those are going to be, for example, condition fields, section fields, page fields. And those are the C fields, the S fields, and the P fields that you have the ability to customize. Your job fields are those J fields at the very beginning. Again, you have the ability to customize those if you need it. Everything else is going to be specific to the industry that you're working in, except for generic. Generic is going to be those generic conditions that you have available in your database or the quick pricing conditions. And ultimately, this is how you're going to be using that info. So if you needed to, you could click on any one of the categories, choose the lookup, and you could go in and add products or delete products depending on what trade you're working in. Continuing forward, you do have a miscellaneous items. So if I were to click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to open up all of the miscellaneous options that I have in my database. Now for video's sake, trying to keep this video on the shorter side of things, I'm not going to because it does take a couple minutes for it to load all of those miscellaneous items available. If you did want to make any modifications to those, you could do that directly in a job or this is another option for you directly in the database. Continue down paint coverages. That's going to apply to the painting trade specifically, but this is just going to allow you to go in and adjust the coverages for some of those specifics that you have out there. Phase codes, again, these are those user definable fields. This is the user two field. It's going to be just like the account code option. So it's going to allow you to go in and add or modify or delete any of those user defined codes that you've added into the program. Subdivisions. Now subdivisions, this is where you're going to go in and make modifications. Realistically, you'll see things like roofing, drywall, acoustical, eaves, carpet. And this is just the different breakouts that you have on your recap screen. So this is where you're going to control any markups you have. In this case, if you wanted to make any adjustments, you would simply go to the subdivision that you want to adjust or edit. And you're going to hit on the edit button here on the left hand side. You can also double click. That'll open up the properties for you as well. Once you open the properties, you're going to be working with these three tabs across the top. Tax class markup, this is going to refer to any tax class that you have. So material, other, subcontractors, supervision, equipment, labor. So if you needed to make an adjustment, click on one of those options and now you can go through and edit any of those markups that are in there by default. If you need to add or delete, you also have that capability. Simply just left click on the option, choose delete and say yes. What you're doing is you're making a change to that specific subdivision. So any job from this point forward that you create is now going to be reflected upon what you're seeing here. Moving from the tax class markups to the subdivision markups, this is where you're going to adjust any overhead or any of those markups that you need in between the subtotal of your tax classes and the contract amount. So this is going to be right before your profit. In this case, just simply double click on any one of these options. You can go in and change your description. You can also change the markup that you're working with. Once you've made your modifications, go ahead and click save. And then in this case, if you need to still make an edit to the profit, go ahead and open that back up. Click on your profit item and now you can make your modifications. In this case, you're seeing if the applies to all tax classes is not selected. If you needed to apply to all tax classes, just go ahead and choose that option. Now you can also choose a different display method. So if you didn't want to see it as a percent, but you wanted to see it more as a profit to sell percentage, or you wanted to see what the per hour, per man day, or per crew day amount is that you were going to be making in profit, you can also select those as options here for you. Whatever you select and click save, that's how every job from this point forward is going to be presented for you. Now, if you do break your recap screen into multiple subdivisions, feel free to go through and make all of the adjustments you need to to the different subdivisions that you're utilizing.
Continuing down, you have surfaces. Surfaces is going to be one of those fields that applies to your fireproofing. You're just going to be able to go in and adjust the surface information and how it's presented in every single project from this point moving forward. Simply double click, go out, find the surface you're working with and make your edits. The next option you have is your tax classes. Realistically, your tax classes are just how we're organizing the recap screen. In this case, you'll see the different cost types and you'll see the sequential number. If you need to make modifications, feel free to go in here and edit this. This will allow you to customize what's being displayed starting from top down on that recap screen. And the final option you have is your user codes. In this case, if you double click on a user code, you're gonna be able to make modifications to any of this information that you may be working in. So in this case, you can change the hours per day when you're looking at labor. You can also change the crew size when you're looking at labor as well. In this case, if we look at our roofing labor and we open the properties by clicking the edit button, you'll see that their labor type is roofing labor. So if I wanted to make sure that my labor, my cost per hour was gonna be coming in correct, I would go edit the labor types of roofing labor. I know that this is coming in with a crew size of seven and that they're working an eight hour day. If that wasn't the case, I would simply make a modification to any one of these fields here. And then from that point forward, any job that you now create or any job that you now refresh with that user code is now going to reflect the current database changes. If you did need to make a change to any of the other information here, you're more than welcome to, but most of the time it's gonna be used for the labor type, the crew size, and the hours per man day. If you need to add any user code, you can click the green plus here at the top, or you can click the copy and insert button on anything that's going to be similar to what you may be needing to create. Now, I know we covered a lot in this video, However, if you have any additional questions or you need any assistance as you're making these database changes, please do not hesitate to call our tech team. They'd be more than happy to assist you in any way they can. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.